Google. The biggest problems with drug discovery is that basically um, a lot of work has been done to make uh, molecules over the past 100, 200 years, but they're basically searching in the same... It's imagine like you're going to an unknown city and they map the city. Now they know the city and they keep going back and finding the same places again. So it gets harder and harder to discover new molecules. So that's a, that represents a critical bottleneck and we've found a way to solve that problem and not only for discovery, which is a secret, but once we found it, we can then optimize it and then it's almost take the right route across the city. And then once we know that route, we can then sell that route to people or so it can be manufactured. And my driver is the science, um, but I am, because I get funded by the taxpayer, um, I'm interested on in how it's going to affect their life and I guess how it could affect social change. So, but I'm, I'm learning this, so I'm, I'm not an expert. I'm, I'm, I guess, a disruptive scientist who's, who understands that they might be disruptive. And so I'm kind of trying to figure out what that means. So 3D printing, it provides a, a new way of thinking. So you can download some code and then you can make something. And that concept, I think, is extremely important here. Whereas we're not using 3D printers to print molecules, we're using the robot, cheap robotic architecture and the, and the software to basically regularize the chemistry set. So it's a bit like we're taking the chemistry set that is vast and compacting it into a 3D printer-like device. And then we can then share the code and that allows people to then co cooperate in a different way and much more efficiently. And I think then discovery in one place can be very, um, very portable. And I think that's something that we haven't had before. It's a bit like going through again, back to the maze, you go around the maze, you get lost. You don't actually write down how you got lost. It's like now you can share the process of getting lost and then other people know not to go down that blind alley. Equally, when you found the way that works, you can share that. So in my lab in Glasgow, what we're trying to do is basically build a new type of concept for chemistry of how we make molecules and build that into the digital age. And so what we're doing is we're building hardware, robots, that will do chemistry. We're developing the code base for that chemistry and also we're developing the inks or the input chemicals that are safe but diverse enough to form other molecules. Then when we get that code, we're making very special code bases for simple open source molecules that aren't worth any money and then with a lab in China we're giving them that code just to see as a proof of principle can they replicate what we did in our lab in their lab it's actually in a lab that I run in Beijing and this is the exchange that's going on at the moment so the ultimate goal is it's very simple there are three things we want to do we want to discover completely new country of drugs we want to open up organic chemistry by apping it. We are going to make molecules uh, in a way that aren't, it's just not possible today because it's too complicated. Then once we've actually found ones that are interesting, we're going to change the optimization and make it a bit more smart. We can use artificial intelligence to optimize the molecules. And then once we've used that artificial intelligence, we know the code and we can then manufacture it. And so we can then appify it. So we can write an app and so you can download the, you know, the Lee Cronin is allergic to this uh, antibiotic, but he can have the, this one, so I'll download that. So I basically want to make medicine more available in the end, but on the steps along the way, I'd like to make chemistry more accessible to other scientists. So there's a number of steps we can make, but the key thing is the digitalization of the chemical world and the deployment across boundaries. As a scientist, regulation doesn't really impact me very much because I have to be, well, it impacts me in the same way as any other scientist. I have to be safe, ethical, and a consci a conscious of the impact of the work in the lab. So that's normal, so we have to carry on. But with a wider step, if we start to make chemical fabricators uh, available to other groups, and then we have to start taking special responsibility about how we can make sure that, say, a biochemist who starts to make nasty chemicals in their lab, how they become safe. What do they have to understand now? Because they have to, in the same way, if I started doing genetic engineering in my lab, I would have to understand the ethics and the protocols there. So that's kind of a very special scientific basis. For the wider world, well, I guess this could have ra massive ramifications because suddenly anyone can make their own pharmaceuticals, you know, 100 years from now, and regulation has to develop. And it's not my job to say that's going to happen to tomorrow. I, I don't think I can, but it would be interesting for discussions like we're having right now for people to have that thought experiment. What would happen if? So I think the intermediate step is, in my lifetime, in my lab, are we discovering new molecules using this system and will break into new ground for drug discovery? We'll then break into new ground for manufacturing. So drug companies will have their own secure facility for the code, for the, the robots, and they'll make the molecules much more cheaply and quickly than before. 
in their premises. But then, once that's happened, there is then the, the, the potential to add on as we personalize. So I think the driver will be not, can we make drugs at home, but can we make them personal for you that are tailored to your genome and to your environmental needs? That's really interesting, because if you say you have a, a you're, you know, you're very old and you have like, 10 different illnesses and you have to take 20 different pills, could we somehow combine all that together in the one form that you take and then you don't get confused. You are always, you're optimizing for your health. And there's a new way of deploying healthcare and making the outcomes better. So I think the regulators and me want the same thing, that we want it to be safe and we want better outcomes.